In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins, we turn back to the Lord now, and we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of Blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. May God bless us in his mercy. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations your salvation. May God bless us in his mercy. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity, the nations on the earth you guide. May God bless us in his mercy. May the peoples praise you, O God, may all the peoples praise you. May God bless us. And may all the ends of the earth fear him. May God bless us in his mercy. Our 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then also an heir, through God. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem, and found Mary and Joseph, and the infant lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. For us, Christmas is not just a single day. It's a celebration that goes on for many days, as we know. And you know, it, uh, it pretty much has to. Not only does it take time to open and to and especially to discover uh, what others have been have given to us it also takes even more time to open and to discover what god has given to us namely the gift of his son jesus it's like starting a new friendship or keeping an old friendship fresh and new every day is yet another day of discovery and appreciation of who this other person is we looked at the we look at the gift of jesus and we say who is he what is he all about uh, getting Jesus for Christmas is sometimes like getting a puzzle for a present. When we say, I, you know, you'll, you see that box of a thousand pieces and you think, okay, I'm going to have to wait until I have more time to look at this because it's going to take some time. But it's fun to see the image of Jesus reveal himself, uh, just like doing that puzzle. But sometimes it takes a couple people or more uh, to do a puzzle, especially if it's a, if it's a big one. Sometimes it takes several people to discover something uh, together. And that's how it is with Jesus and discovering him. Mary and Joseph knew something about the specialness of their son. They knew that much. But many others helped them to understand more deeply. Uh, the shepherds, for instance. As we heard, all were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. So the shepherds helped Mary and Joseph to understand. Uh, there, there are the angels, too, who helped Mary and Joseph to understand. The three, uh, the three magi gave more insight into who Jesus was. The prophet Simeon and the prophetess Anna did as well. Our life uh, as a people of faith is rooted in our basic discovery of who this Jesus is. We discover him ourselves. We read about him in scripture. We hear about him through the words of his disciples, uh, down through the ages. Our Catholic life is characterized by this big, long Christmas, this big, long unwrapping of God's gift of Jesus. At its most basic, that's what our life is about, discovering Jesus, getting to know him. In fact, the reason why we even have today's uh, solemnity is because people way back in the 4th and 5th centuries uh, took their discovery of Jesus uh, very, very seriously. It had, been, uh, had become a custom already in the 4th century to refer to the Virgin Mary as the Theotokos, uh, which means God-bearer, or as we would say, Mother of God. 
uh, people generally agreed that Mary wasn't the mother of Jesus' divinity. Uh, instead, she was the mother of his human nature, which is what we still believe today. But uh, because of that, uh, there were some people who, who went a step further and then said, well, well, then Jesus must be two people in one. One person who's divine and the other who's human. Uh, Mary isn't the mother of God, but simply the mother of Jesus, the human. Uh, and then that's when, the, that's when the argument broke out. And at first glance, it seems like uh, the argument was about Mary, but it wasn't. The argument was about who Jesus is. The early church was opening this gift of Jesus, but they didn't all agree on whom uh, they had found there. Uh, eventually, uh, a council of the church was called the Council of Ephesus in 431 to, uh, to talk about the matter and to decide it. And from that decision in the year 431, we still today call today's solemnity Mary, Mother of God. We call her Mother of God, not Mary, Mother of Jesus. Uh, they recognized the faithful way back in the in the fifth century that Jesus, like every other person, cannot be divided up into pieces. Jesus is a whole person, a person, but with two natures: one fully divine and one fully human. And so, to say Mary is the mother of God is simply to affirm that the child born from her womb is God. It's to affirm that Jesus is God. A council from the year 431 helps us even today to open and to discover the gift of Jesus that we receive every Christmas and really every day of our lives. But the title, Mother of God, also affirms that the Virgin Mary wasn't just some incidental character in the life of Christ uh, and in the history of salvation. She was still Jesus' mother. She reared Jesus at her home in Nazareth, she cared for him and kept him safe. Uh, and she and Joseph assured that Jesus was brought up according to the law of God in the Jewish faith. As we heard in the, in the gospel, when eight days were completed, he was circumcised according to the law. And then he was presented at the temple according to the law as the firstborn. Uh, Mary's motherhood wasn't simply physical. It was also spiritual and religious. Uh, she was and is his mother. It's just a week past now since uh, Christmas Day, and we're still enjoying all the presents that uh, we have received. And as every year, we're still opening God's gift to us of Jesus. Who is he? What's he about? And to help with, with discovering and unwrapping this gift of Jesus, we do what Mary the Mother of God would, we, what she did. We listen to what others tell us about who he is, the shepherds, the angels, scripture, the saints, believers down through the centuries, we listen to what a whole host of others have to say about who this Jesus is. And then we ourselves keep all these things, reflecting on them in our hearts. And once again, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And once again, with faith and confidence and hope uh, in our God and his providence and wisdom, we offer to him now our prayer. We pray for the church, 
that we may be like Mary, treasuring God's words and deeds in our hearts and drawing wisdom from them for our daily lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, all who hold public office and public servants, that they may serve their people with integrity, justice, and honor, let us pray to the Lord. For the ill and the suffering, that God would sustain their spirits, relieve their suffering, and give them hope, let us pray to the Lord. for a deepening of our relationships, that God would help us to grow in love, understanding, and mercy with all whom we share life. Let us pray to the Lord. For God's blessings on the new year, that God would fill the coming days with health of body, mind, soul, and spirit, renew the gifts of the Spirit within us, and inspire us along the way of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers written in our parish books of prayer, and for the prayers we offer to the Lord from the altar of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those who have fallen asleep and rest in Christ, that they would awaken to the light of God's face, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers, for like Mary, we trust in your good will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life.